This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org. Now, the field of ruminant microbiology started in about 1950 or so by a fellow named Robert Hungate. He was the father of ruminant microbiology. In fact, he was the father of anaerobic microbiology. He was the first scientist to culture bacteria that died from oxygen in the laboratory. And it's actually quite a difficult thing to do. We have chambers that are uh, oxygen eliminated and we fill them up with hydrogen uh, in order to culture these bacteria because if they come in contact with oxygen, it'll kill them. And so it's quite challenging to grow these bacteria in the laboratory. So he went ahead and did that. He started that field. And you know, several other laboratories got involved in that too. A lot of the research, original research, actually focused around the condition of bloat. Uh, trying to solve the condition of pasture or feedlot bloat was a lot of the impetus for the first study that was done in the microbiology. There was a very famous com- conference held in Chicago uh, each year on that topic that Robert Hunt had often attended. Um, so they went ahead and they were culturing and identified some of that bacteria and, and we thought we had most of the bacteria figured out within the room and as a result of those culturing techniques. And then the whole field of molecular biology came along and it really changed, it was a game changer in terms of how we could study the room. Because now what we can do is go in through that window that I showed you there in that first picture and we can take out a sample of those room contents and we can extract the DNA and the RNA from all the microbes that live in that environment. And then by taking that DNA and RNA and running it through a sequencer to know what that genetic sequence is, we can sequence all of those bacteria that are present in that environment. Then by putting that sequence all together and looking at specific sequences, we can identify which bacteria are there. So each bacteria has a specific sequence. And by looking at that sequence, we can tell all the different types of bacteria that are there. And when they first did that, there was a huge discovery in that the, when they looked at all those sequences, they only matched with about 5% of the bacteria that were cultured out in the laboratory. 95% had never been cultured. So suddenly, we, you, you know, we thought we had that ecosystem figured out, and here we found out that in the laboratory today, we had only been studying 5% of the population. 95% of it was still uncharacterized. So by taking that material now, you know, and RNA is produced from DNA. So when a gene is what we call expressed, it produces RNA, and then RNA is translated into an enzyme or a protein that then carries out a biochemical function. So by looking at those types of genes, how can we figure out who is there? But by looking at the genes that are associated with metabolic pathways, we can start to figure out what they're doing. So for example, if we find a gene that's associated with starch digestion within that bacteria, we know that bacteria has the capacity to digest starch. If it lacks the genes associated with digesting fiber, we then know that that bacteria cannot digest fiber. And then by sorting that out, we can start to figure out what the various bacteria are going to do. And we're still working on that today. Uh, there's still many, many bacteria and protozoa and fungi within the rumen that have yet to be discovered and fully described. So that's still going on, but until the advent of molecular biology, we didn't even know that condition existed. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter.